the difficulty is not being a presenter, but just being me, and, and not being a chef who chases novelty, but being a home cook. There's, I can't honestly say anything I ever do is going to be enormously different, because I can only be me, and I only cook food I want to cook. The, the, there is a slight difference, I think. Well, I have never done such a single focus uh, well, I, I always start from the book and then do TV, but I've never had such a single focus. And in many ways, it surprised me because when I started thinking about the book, I wrote a very different book. That's how it should be because it's, everything is slightly a voyage of discovery. Otherwise, uh, it would all be boring. And so I wanted to think about how Italian food had colonized the world. And I do think it's quite interesting that really we haven't seen this since the Roman Empire. The Italians have been quite quiet since then. I mean, obviously, yes, we've had Leonardo da Vinci, we've had various great people, but nevertheless now, I think it, there's a sort of universal appeal and it's a language that people have grown accustomed to. It doesn't seem foreign to us, the language of Italian cooking. And that interested me and I had gone to, I had lived in Italy when I left school before uh, I went to university because I, I wanted to learn Italian. So having lived there and really learned to cook and also had learned to cook on a chambermaid's wages, you know, I went there saying I'll do anything except for clean restrooms and that is what I ended up doing, obviously. Uh, so I learned to to speak and I learned to cook and it had a I'd been a very very shy child so for me it kind of liberated me because as shy as I was in English I wasn't in Italian and I think there's something very transformative about uh, when one leaves home and I think if you if leaving home coincides with learning a new language as frightening as that is it gives you something that's your own and if you come from a large family that can be important and then of course I followed it up by you know I went to I was at Oxford University and I studied a lot of Italian, mostly you know <laughs> medieval and not not enormously helpful in conversation, but nevertheless interesting. And I cooked for everyone, so I cooked. So I, I regard my early years of cooking and my early years of learning Italian as being very linked. And so I suppose that's what found its way into this series, which is about how I cook, and part part of it is very influenced by, I'd say English food, but that sounds so odd out of England, but it, uh, it's really more contemporary English cooking, which is, I come from London, which in a way is separate, such a big cosmopolitan city that you grow up with a lot of influences and you take that for granted. It's not like a self-conscious fusion way of cooking, it's just how you're used to seeing food. But I wanted to, I wanted to write about Italian food slightly taken away from the sentimental notion of, oh, this must not be changed, it's how the authentic recipe is and has never been altered. And having done research and knowing Italians, I know that what someone's mother's authentic recipe is very different from someone else's mother's authentic recipe. There isn't one authentic recipe, that's not, that's not how food develops. So I felt as long as I always said, when I was veering from what is considered widely traditional, I would allow myself to cook in the way we all cook. I think cooking is like language, it evolves. I've, and I felt that, I, always, I suppose my books are always autobiographical, implicitly if, and sometimes explicitly. And I, I've got a job and I've got children and I need to cook in a way that means that food has to be fast. And I drew on Italian cooking, which my, and my children, incidentally, that's their favorite. So I got the seal of approval from them. So I, it's really about the food one cooks every day and sometimes changing it a bit to suit me or, or just getting inspiration from a particular ingredient. I wanted to be as free-flowing as I could and not give myself rules. So, and, and that's how it works. And, and I, I ended up with something that wasn't what I expected, but, but, I, but I loved doing it. And also, you know, I always talk too much, but anyway, uh, also, in terms of why this is different, I did this this time, which I haven't done before, as a co-production with the BBC, they've normally quite it. And I felt, again, just like my early broadcasters, they gave me a lot of leeway and they trusted me. I have my crew that I've had forever and um, we work together like a family and it's, I don't even, when the cameraman is with me, we don't even need 
to say what's happening, it, we're so used to the choreography of dancing together, it, it, it feels like it works. The strange thing is, is that having always vowed I didn't want to go into television, I started off as a print and radio journalist and uh, liked existing only in my words. I actually was not a food journalist. So I did do quite a bit of TV later, not straight away, because I, as I say, I, I felt reluctant. I, I uh, co-presented a book program for quite a few seasons and I was on various political commentary and news programs because I wasn't a food journalist. So then I lurched into food journalism or food writing really by accident and I was asked if I'd make a program and I said no and then I agreed I would make a pilot provided I could work exactly as I wished which was to say at home and without a script. And to be fair, the, my broadcasters at the time, Channel 4 in the UK, it was quite brave of someone they hadn't used before to, to let someone really have no script. And that worked better for me. You have to be slightly driven by fear, which I am, and the need to fill the silence. But I do feel, particularly when I cook, that because I don't cook in a particularly structured way and because I don't do professional style cooking it's far more organic and I feel I take my cue script wise from what the food is doing and particularly since we, sh we shoot in a very different way than a lot of American shows because we shoot more like a film I'd say you know we spend a lot a long time so for one program it may well be six days shooting so we start off with a wide shot and when we're doing the wide shot I feel it's I I'm talking partly to keep my cameraman who I've worked with since 1998 I I do it in order to keep him interested because he doesn't know what I'm doing all he sees is a, is a pan so I'm I'm describing to him I'm letting, I'm trying to make him interested in what will happen later when we eventually get to, you know, shooting in the pan, which is a long way down the road. I'm a writer, not a television pre presenter. So I'm a writer and I've written some books I don't turn into TV series. Now, partly that my children are older now, but nevertheless, you know, you can write a book in school hours and you can't make television programs in school hours. And so I, I, I only think in terms of books and then sometimes I do a TV series based on it and that works. But, but I do think it's very important that both have their own identity. I don't make, they're not tie-ins exactly, it really is much more about this is what works in a book and then you have something else which works in TV. It's, the, the, of course they're slightly together. I mean I, there are certain things I felt very strongly in both which is that this is something, the odd thing to say if you do what I do for a living which is that both cookery books and food television um, really are most influenced by photogenic food and I really wanted to show people that there are certain things for example like a pasta with zucchini that the Italians cook where of course what, by the time the zucchini is cooked, it's kind of khaki, it's not beautiful. But I, in a sense, it's still beautiful to me, but I felt very strongly that I wanted to remind people that food is about what it tastes of, and actually something very simple, that you just have a bit of parmesan, a zu some zucchini and pasta, and that's really it. So that it's easy, it tastes good, but if you just saw its picture, you might think, this is not inspiring. I, I, I felt the real urge to try and make people fight their prejudices.